So what is application dependency mapping? What's the definition of it? You can read it, but it's really understanding of what infrastructure pieces are there to support your applications. And the applications are those things which your businesses, which the business you are part of is driving. And in today's environment, there is much and much and much and much and lots and lots and lots of dependency on that one. I mean, if I look at E-Trade and all those companies, they don't have anything else, that's their business. Their business is their, their shop. E-Trade is the business. They don't have a production line, they don't have a manufacturing line. So for those, it, this is a very important subject area. So if you read it, application to infrastructure dependency mapping bridges the gap between the business user value, application performance, and what the IT specialist sees, which essentially is the component availability, the infrastructure which is available to support the applications. Plus, one thing I, I believe and forced to believe that this combined with ITIL CMDB configuration management database lays the foundation for a change on how we do things in the future in IT, how you do things in the future in IT. So let me see why, let me, let me make the connection for you. Why is application dependency so important? It is, I believe, an enabling technology. Forrest just believes it's an enabling technology. Think of one point, release management. Check understanding of what is out there before you actually go into your uh, production from the development is a very key, key point. How many times have you had the issue that you have moved something from development into production and somebody over the fence was screaming because something happened, something you haven't known or you, you didn't know. Very important. Configuration change management. If you do a change and you don't understand what this change impact is on the change you're doing, then you are, you're in for a lot of trouble. And many of us have done that. I've done it myself when I was in JCL land or doing Pascal or Oracle or whatever I did at the, in the time before. So I have been very, very guilty of that. Compliance and audit trails. To understand and to, be, to make it easier when you have and when you need to provide audit trails, it is so much easier to know what you have there instead of every time you need to do something like this, you go out and you do a search. There are still many, many, many people who do today track of what they have in their environment from the infrastructure to what applications are running on that infrastructure, what business is supported by that. And as Richard said, there is lots and lots and lots of things which people have to go through and say, okay, yeah, that's mine, no, that's mine, that's, that's mine. Who is that? You come across things like, whose is this? Oh, Joe, oh, Joe is long gone. Compliance issues, right? Cost and chargeback. How do you actually charge your owners of your application? What is at the end of the month you're gonna tell them you do it, what's your, what's your logic? I mean, how do you actually understand what of how much of the application has been used and how much do you charge back to the particular line of business? Disaster recovery and planning. Uh, I don't see the gentleman in here. He, I, was, I met him last night at the, at the cocktail hour, which you, unfortunately, many of you missed. We had some great champagne. Next time you have to come. Great Bellinis. <laughs> and great Bellinis. Um, I met him and he said, he was telling me a story. He said, oh, uh, every two years or so, my company has a major disaster. And every time after that major disaster, and Carsten, we talked about that, Every time after that disaster, they say, and next time we do something different, right? But then they get back into the modus of operation, what they usually do, and they come back, like all of us also from these fantastic <laughs> conferences, we have all these ideas and we come back and we say, we're gonna change that, we're gonna do that, we're gonna implement that. Well, they didn't, and they had another failure and another disaster recovery. They had a power outage, believe it or not, and that power outage out of, out of the, the 20% of their servers went down, um, but the 20% of the, of the servers were so important to 80% of their business that they had protection for other servers, which they didn't really, they didn't know, right? So here is, is another uh, a key point. And then, of course, site, pl site planning, consolidation. Consolidation is the big, the big C word. Everybody is doing consolidation on the infrastructure. Everybody is doing consolidation on the, on the servers, on the, on the databases, on the whatever is out there is, is a big thing. Understanding that is helping you um, to see what you need to consolidate. And then IT operation management. It's much more dynamic provisioning when you understand what's happening. You can actually proactively provision what is needed 
to support your businesses, which in turn gives us in IT, if it's positive, have you noticed? If it's positive, I say us. If it's negative, I say you. That's typical, <laughs> that's typical analyst speak, but it gives operations team a much better, uh, I call it the positive factor. You, you look better. If you have the knowledge of what's going on and you understand it and you know what the impact is, you understand all of those things. You have a much better foundation to work forward, forward and to be with your line of business. That's why I believe it's an enabling technology.